Joyce, I'm so excited to talk to you about Global Coin Research and just learn more about your story because you have been in the space, um, you know, longer than a lot of people. And um, I think particularly with this idea of um, a, a community and a DAO uh, that focuses on writing, it seems like a, a very hot topic at the moment. And so your insight based on the last few years, I, I think will be um really interesting to maybe also give me an idea of where you think um, this whole trend is going. But I wonder if we could maybe start just with, you know, a, a bit of background and an overview of um, Global Coin Research. Thank you so much, Alicia, for having me. I honestly, the space is moving so quickly that I almost don't even know to start. But to go back to kind of how I started Global Coin Research, uh, it's been quite some time now. Um, I was originally a research analyst working for Merrill Lynch. So that was, you know, a lifetime ago where I was writing and doing a lot of research on technology companies, not crypto companies, because those didn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want to date myself. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, crypto, crypto, yeah. years, crypto years needs to be a thing like dog years. So everyone Please. understands, but yeah. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Um, and so um, after kind of spending some time writing and researching uh, at a bank, I actually transitioned to also become a uh, writer at TechCrunch and the information. So, you know, I spend my time acting as actual reporter, talking to companies and learning about them um, and, and writing for those platforms. And, you know, over time, I realized, you know, of course, in the current mainstream media, we don't really have a great grasp on crypto, right? As you can imagine, it's a very high tech high barrier to entry type of industry, very technical. I mean, I wouldn't say I'll call myself an expert. I'm just learning from the smartest people in the space. Um, and at the same time, I, you know, trying to learn about the evolving technologies in the space and, and over time, uh, gradually forming our own voices in the space is kind of how I came to build global coin research. Um, for for us, you know, we evolved a lot too over time. I apologize mm -hmm. for the dog sound behind me. You know, I locked my dogs in the room because I didn't want them to disturb me. But that's this is kind of giving me the opposite effect. No, um, I can totally relate to dog <laughs> interference. So <laughs> please don't apologize. Yeah, yeah, I have to. So they kind of go crazy when they hear noise outside and, and, and one just one pile them to the other and then it's just chaos. Um, so. You know, for Global Queen Research, we are now a tokenized community of writers and researchers and also investors in the space uh, and, and the folks, you know, who are members of the ecosystem and the community are actually, you know, folks who have been in the space for quite some time. They're very knowledgeable about crypto. They got in their hands wet through investing or participating or contributing to a network of some sort. So, um, you know, to step back a little bit, though, um, what Global Coin Research is, is that we're first a website where you could go for great content. You can go for great crypto content and learning about, you know, having an insight um, into a particular project or getting a guide into a particular type of, you know, learning about NFTs 101, right? Mm -hmm. We provide those kind of resources on our platform. And um, secondly, we also have a community on Discord where we're actively doing a lot of education as well as speaker series kind of events uh, digitally as well as physically with our community, who at large, you know, are very global, uh, global globally minded, but also very globally distributed members. Right. Um, so it's it's been a really fun journey. We have had, you know, hosted meetups for many folks in various past conferences pre-COVID. We haven't done one since, since then. It's, and, you know, I am really looking forward to kind of getting back into, um, into, into that. But at the same time, you know, what we try to preserve in our community and the, um, in our type of the, 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 the kind of excitement in the community is around the quality of the content that we provide and the quality of, of kind of working, uh, worker, uh, sorry, workshops that, that we provide to educate folks, you know, because there's a lot of, obviously a lot of noises in this, in this space. And what we try to provide is bring in really great uh, folks, founders, you know, uh, traders to actually give the right type of education um, to properly um, educate as well as inform folks so that they don't get misled or participate in a scam or something like that. Um, yeah, so that, that's, 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 
that's us in a nutshell, but there are a lot more to it. And, and I would say where global coin research has evolved from, you know, a generic, you know, media platform that used to be, you know, kind of similar to TechCrunch or the information to now a ecosystem of, you know, layers of kind of providing content, but also uh, on top of that educational, more hands-on type of resources. Um, and honestly, I think what we're seeing in the media side, and I'm sure you probably are very aware as well, is, is that, you know, many of the crypto media platforms are going towards a token kind of um, driven platform, right? And and token driven economics. Um, and, and we'll be seeing that in the next year. And it's super exciting to kind of really witness that, you know, because I think media has historically been a very uh, backwards or slow moving industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we, but in crypto, I think um, we want to be more forward thinking. We want to be able to um, kind of set experiments. And that's how I thought about kind of when we're kind of tokenizing global point research, because it was very kind of atypical to do so. Anyway, so I think I spoke a lot more about those things that, that you probably didn't ask about, but we can go <laughs> whichever direction you want. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's wonderful. And so I'm really excited to talk about tokenized communities. And um, I, I wonder if just before we head down that path, we could maybe just talk about writing in general, because it is, um, you know, very, it seems very intentional that the, that global coin research is, is focused on writing as the kind of main medium. And I have my own thoughts about why writing is so particularly wonderful, but I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, for sure. And I honestly, I think writing is so underrated still in this space, even though we have lots of folks who are helping uh, and contributing to the ecosystem by sharing their thoughts on Twitter or sharing their thoughts on Substack. It's, there's not enough information to be shared to, in the ecosystem. And so, you know, just coming from my background, I was a writer for multiple years. I honestly wouldn't call myself a great writer, which is why we actually, which kind of explains to actually what happened. In the, initially, we were actually a platform where uh, I managed a team of writers and I enrolled myself where we contributed information about the ecosystem. And over time, we decentralized that entire team as well as outsourced a lot of or crowdsourced rather a lot of the writers from the ecosystem who actually are way better writers than you know <laughs> any of us um and, and honestly it's just a great way to um gather mind uh mind share as well as just smart people who often have a piece of opinion that they want to express somewhere but they don't know where and this is why global coin research is the way it is now which is a essentially a medium for crypto writers and, and we position ourselves as that platform because we built our reputation over the years as a platform that provides quality content. And we have a slew of readers such as, you know, founders of Coinbase or Binance, as well as the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal and um, funds like Multicoin, Scalar Capital, who, you know, has been following us for a long time. And what we try to do now and offer that to our writers who are coming onto our platform and writing is that offer them that that channel of distribution. So if you think about it, anyone who has really smart voice and thoughtful ideas, we want to push them in front of these quality audience folks and, and have them be heard, right? And so this is how, what we're doing now as a platform for Global Coin Research. So if you read our content, we have a, an editorial team where we're actually filtering through the content and the contributors to make sure that the quality is still top notch and the, that it fits the appetite of type of people we're catering to and we're sending this these content to, right? And 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 when it comes to you know uh, how we think about ourselves as a platform, we ultimately think that you know with um, the, the GCR token in place and 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 uh, I didn't talk about this before, but when writers are able to write on our platform and their articles and research gets approved by our editorial team, they get paid in GCR tokens, right? And we think in the past, compensation has never really been a great, um, hasn't really proven out as a great model in the writer ecosystem, right? If you think about Medium or Substack, mm -hmm. it's very hard to monetize for, for writers, um, you know, because for Substack, for example, you have to have a following, you have to, you know, have continuously writing for multiple times and be heard or be found until then can you start trying to monetize? And it's still really hard to keep up with that. 
And for Medium, you know, they really haven't figured out a monetization model that really worked. And most of the time, you know, no one really wants to pay for a Medium article, right? So what we're thinking and how we have positioned ourselves is that whenever someone is contributing our global coin research, they're able to earn GCR tokens immediately in their wallet and they can, you know, go into our dashboard and withdraw those GCR tokens in return for the writing because their, you know, their, their, their articles and research have been, you know, through our straw editorial team to uh, be able to be vetted. Right. Um, and, and in return, you know, what, uh, this is the value that we want to provide for the ecosystem, which is that, you know, great insights, great research that, um, Either, you know, whether you're a participant in a network or you're just a bystander reading about crypto, you're, you're, you're kind of consuming this quality content. And, and these folks who are consuming the content is actually um, required to hold GCR tokens to be able to read some of the good, con con good content that we have on the platform. So in return, they're supporting the token ecosystem and directly benefiting the writers um, by, by holding the tokens and maintaining the value. If that makes sense, uh, this I, this I, kind of went around a little bit of your question about writers. I know, <laughs> I I, forget, I kind of feel like I should have mentioned that just so that because it's not the most straightforward model and it's definitely a very new model. But, but a lot of crypto media folks are exploring. Um, right. But at the same time, it's 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 a really cool thing that I'm very excited about. Yeah, and so is this yeah. what you just explained? Is was that the idea of media mining? Yes, yes, exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, Which is such, yeah. a, it's such a great way to um, like uh, communicate that idea so quickly. So if you were to just give me a quick overview of media mining um, and how Global Coin Research uses it, um, what would it be? Yeah. For crypto native folks, they will understand this immediately because mining is such a native mm -hmm. you know, concept to everyone. So, so crypto media mining essentially on Global Coin Research is in return for your contribution for are for content and research and great pieces that you um, contribute on our on our platform, you get to earn GCR tokens, and 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 you know it's pretty straightforward. We want to make sure that we're catering to the folks who have been in the space for a long time, who understand these concepts, who are, you know, their their profiles are usually they participate in many different projects as contributors, and they want to be helpful. But in return, they also get to earn you know something at least for for their living. Right, um, um, and, and it's 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 a beneficial kind of concept that we're trying to introduce to the community. Yeah, yeah, that's um, it, I definitely, I'm really fond of kind of crypto native <clears throat> concepts evolving, and I think it is actually quite interesting because it helps like set some sort of level of separation between, especially for writers, like you said, the, the business model is very difficult. It's, it's a tough path to monetization. And so um, just like, I guess the, the language of using media mining um, as opposed to like this, this idea even of, of monetization um, helps kind of ground me in the ecosystem where, yeah, you're essentially in a different world and there, there are different possibilities. So I, um, I wonder in terms of the, the writers that you attract and the makeup of um, the, the community that you have, uh, is there like a separation between the, the writers and the community members or do the writers emerge from the community? How, how does that kind of all play out? Yeah, that's a great question. And I honestly think it's very unique to crypto because so if, um, you know, when I was a research analyst or a TechCrunch journalist, you know, we were the writers, and there was a big separation between the writers and the consumers and the readers of the content, right? But in crypto, I think it's very much tied together because everyone is part of this ownership economy. Everyone is a contributor and everyone is a part of a network. Um, so it's very closely tied when you're actually um, writing and also earning tokens. And it's not a kind of um, um, kind of ideas that are in juxtap kind of in opposite and juxtaposition. If that makes sense. Um, so, so the way we've been thinking about our community is that our a lot of researchers and writers are coming on our platform to write whether they're, you know, they have an idea or project that they feel strongly about and they want to express opinions about. Um, and over time, they learn about our platform, you know, our Discord community, and 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 you know, they the, the typical profile of these folks are. They're curious. They want to be more involved. They want to learn more about the 
kind of the insights from other folks who are also smart and savvy in the crypto ecosystem and see how they're earning, um, for example, alpha or 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 or, uh, or contributing to the ecosystem. And and over time, this becomes kind of they kind of graduate from the platform into the Discord community, into participating in are learning about the workshops that we have and getting access to the founders that we provide them to, uh, where you know we have founder series uh, where they come by and, and kind of talk and, and share their ideas and pitches of like the next vision of what they're building, right? And, and everyone, you know, I think for, for crypto native shares many of these attributes, which is you know they're natively curious, um, they are always experimenting and they're always um, kind of getting their hands wet and then and, and trying out these different projects and using them, right? And becoming uh, participants in these networks. Um, so that's just to say that, you know, um, that is very true to crypto, I think, and very mm -hmm. special to the crypto community because those folks who stay in the community are always, you have to be like that or else like you, there's, it will be just too overwhelming for you, right? <laughs> you know what I mean, right? I'm sure you, you're very aware of <laughs> You're very aware of that. We're well aware of that. Um, yeah, it's just it's, it's just a fascinating community of you know of people who are passionate and young and and hungry, right? And mm -hmm. and honestly, I think they have a decent amount of capital at their disposal where that's helping um, create this economy that 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 we kind of formed formed ourselves um, because you know you need to hold GCR tokens at least, or at least initially you had to purchase GCR tokens to be able to hold them in your wallet, to be able to consume some of the content you have. Or you also need GCR tokens to be able to enter our Discord to, um, because we're gated by, um, by, 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 uh, by, by Collabland, which is a, a great tool that, that many tokenize. Um, and you need to hold a certain amount of GCR tokens to be able to even get access to many of these um, uh, resources that we provide. Yeah. And I wonder just thinking about the types of people that GCR, or that Global Coin Research attracts, it sounds to me almost like if I was trying to think in the real physical world or um, outside of crypto, what that group of people might be identified as, it almost sounds like like a group of investors or VCs. And I, I guess just like a group of people that are normally not very accessible to the wider public. Um, and so it's actually kind of, it seems like really novel, like this access to deal flow and knowledge, which, um, you know, is normally only circulated in a very kind of um, like privileged group of people, uh, whether that is through their like uh, being accredited investors or their, um, you know, their professional position. Um, so I wonder, is this like a, a new way or like a paradigm shift for what an investor um, and maybe just like a participant in the space could be? I think so. I think what we provide is a platform for folks who have been in this ecosystem for a long time to get more access than they would usually would because the way we position ourselves is that we are a very high quality platform and a community for any projects to approach should they ever want to raise money and raise funds from because, you know, community is a very difficult thing to actually to, to acquire for any project, as you can imagine and witness yourself. Um, and, and, and what we present here is a, a native um, and, and passionate group of folks who are uh, interested in the projects that we pursue and we participate in them and we want to be helpful uh, in either, you know, um, contributing or, or promoting um, for, for, for them. Um, and, and, you know, I do think that, you know, as with the onset of DAOs, and I don't think we're very much any different from a DAO really, uh, in, in many ways, at least in the Discord kind of um, composition type of, 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 of members that we have. Um, it, it really is about democratizing investing. And I, I think mm -hmm. founders are looking for that as well when they're raising money and fundraising for, for their seed round for, for, you know, looking for that community to, to, to attract. Yeah, that's uh, just the way that you said that. I realize that it is definitely a two-way street, kind of the value that uh, investors are provided with, like the alpha and the opportunity. And then for the the projects raising money, also just like having access to um, potentially like a, a really high quality, but also more diverse group of people than they might otherwise get access to. 
Um, so yeah, that, that's really awesome. And so um, I wonder just in terms of the investments that kind of go through Global Hawaiian Research, do they, and is there like a, a dollar amount that is um, typical of, of um, what goes through the community? Yeah, we have done check sizes that range very widely and it depends on the deal. So as you can imagine, when you're participating in seed and pre-seed rounds of projects, the allocation is quite, quite, quite limited, you know, for everyone, honestly, and with, with the onset of so many funds raising their, you know, nth fund and, <laughs> and providing so much capital into the ecosystem, it's, 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 I can only say that, you know, we, we try our best in trying to get as much allocation for, for everyone in, in, in our community as, as possible. But, you know, when it comes to some of the other deals that we do, we actually also provide resources and access to uh, growth equity or mid-sized company fundraises. And in those types of deals, you know, we have done fundraises for SpaceX, for example, in their latest round. Um, and we have participated in Kraken, you know, the crypto exchange in, uh, in, a, in, a, in an employee sale where we offer the sale to our members. And, 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 and these... And these kind of vary in sizes. So we're talking about, you know, hundreds of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars. Um, I think the largest vehicle we've done is probably around 15 so far, um, 15 million. Um, so, 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 so it's, yeah, so it really depends on, you know, how much allocation we could get and how much interest there is in the, in the, in the ecosystem. Right. We also, for example, participate in locating mining, right. Mm -hmm. There are, um, lots of great projects who are always, providing, you know, in exchange for tokens, you are lending them the capital, you know, upfront for six months to, to a year. And, and we, we also provide that kind of um, access for our communities just so that, you know, that's the alternative. And, 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 you know, we have helped projects such as Maple Finance raise $5 million. Uh, and I, I think, you know, what we try to do for all of these projects is being either hands-on helpful as much as we can when we're actually, you know, early in the rounds, for example, or uh, when we actually know the founders directly, or uh, you know, in the later stages when it comes to SpaceX, you know, I, I don't have Elon on my, on my, on my speed dial, but, uh, but, <laughs> we, <laughs> but it's, it's, still, it's still a very cool type of kind of um, access that we provide. I mean, I, I was pretty, pretty proud of it because I was like, oh, wow, SpaceX, it's so cool. <laughs> and, and, and of course, Elon and, and crypto has a love and hate relationship. So that, that actually only happened after we did the deal. But, right. <laughs> before, yeah, or else, or else it would have been very controversial. I would say. <laughs> you probably don't need him on speed dial. It's probably quicker to get in touch with him on Twitter. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's really kind of um, exciting. I think to have that community to have a community um, that is so accessible, um, w which grants kind of access. Um, to those opportunities. And so I wonder just thinking now about the, the tokenomics of um, GCR and I guess just digging into that idea of a, a gated Discord community with tokens and then um, just how you how that all came about and whether it's been kind of a process through iteration or you really had to just like stop, think about it, roll it out and this is how it is forever. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. And I think this is a, this is a this is a kind of a thought process that everyone who's issuing tokens or building a company goes through. And you're like, you know, how do I how do we really push this product out that's in the into the market when you know you, there's not, nothing else like this existed before. Um, and I, honestly, I, I I was pretty hesitant about issuing token for the longest time, even though you know we're I, I'd say we're actually one of the first ones to do it, and then mm -hmm. Bankless did it, and you know those guys executed very well, of course. But we're very different models in some way, in many ways as well. So I'll, I'll explain that later if that's interesting. But um, um, I think you just have to be at some point in, in the crypto space. I realized you know everyone who stays in the space, you know, who are trying to do something really good for the ecosystem, are always experimenting. Right? They're mm -hmm. always pushing out new things and pushing out. Uh, ideas into the ecosystem and getting getting feedback, right? And, and this is how I kind of started with our closest kind of supporters and readers and kind of sh showcasing them that we're trying to issue a token, you know, and and, and then kind of giving them some tokens to to for for that for in in return for their support, and 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 
it wasn't pro it wasn't really a fundraise. It was just like kind of experiments. Like, what do you think about using this token for reading our content? Mm -hmm. um, and 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 it, it echoed pretty well, you know. With uh, we had you know great um, some of the great folks who we mentioned before, uh, who has been supporting us early on, such as Bobby On from Coin Gecko or Linda Shea from Scalar Capital. Right, these guys have been in this ecosystem for a long time, and their 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 attitudes have always been very supportive. Just you know, you trying it out and seeing what. What 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 sticks? <laughs> I, I, I I say it very simply, but it's really it's it's not as simple as that. But um um but it, it but you know I think I was very thankful that we had a community that we could address and share these um these thoughts with and 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 you know and they were responsive to it. So so that that was kind of something that um that that really helped us kind of make the big step of actually, you know, launching the token. And, and thankfully we had projects like Coinvice who was, you know, able to help us launch these tokens very, in a very seamless manner. Um, and they're a great platform just to launch any social tokens, right? So, um, and, 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 and once we put the token out there, you know, it's just, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep going. There's no way to stop now anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that, that, that's, so, so it was, that's a sort of, you know, throwing ourselves into the deep end without mm -hmm. realizing what to do. And then now like trying to, I mean, I, I think every, if any founder tells you that they have all their launch plans, mm -hmm. like laid out and to the T it was, it's definitely a lie because that never happens. Right. And then we're, we're always scrambling, trying to find the next kind of great idea and great kind of, um, kind of product fit for the readers, right? And then thankfully we have a reader base and, you know, we're not trying to be like a DeFi product or, you know, some like undiscovered demographic. We're, we're trying to cater to to our readers. So, so it's always good to get that feedback and continuously to get feedback. That, that's what I say, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, this attitude, like you said um, earlier, that crypto attracts this, a certain type of person and, and particularly people who are interested in kind of writing and research um, are a, a, an, es an especially um, kind of crypto native mind in particular. And so being able to have those conversations um, in a, very openly about what you're building and adapting to the space. I guess, people, you know, I'm sure your community members are very, um, you know, I, I, I want to say empathetic, but almost like excited about the fact and acknowledge the fact that crypto is very fast moving and um, and that presents a lot of possibilities. But, you know, the risk of possibilities is that when you try them out in real life, um, you, you might not know how they go. So it's really interesting as well because it just um, puts into perspective like this idea of first principles and like really first principles thinking you can't avoid it I guess when there is no one to copy from like you really have to just stop and figure it out so um I wonder how just like your thought process about things and kind of reflecting on your time and in, in crypto versus your time before that um how has your the way that you think about um, literally just like ideas or opportunities, what, what is that thought process like for you now? And, and do you think it's changed being in this space? Mm, are you referring to building and pushing features out or or uh, when it comes to yeah, yeah, kind just, of identifying well, opportunities? Just even, yeah, r responding to ideas and how you then integrate them and yeah push them out into the world or evaluate them just in and kind of the mental models that you use because um I, I guess personally you know having that same experience where I, i'm kind of like almost <laughs> i feel like i'm like almost overwhelmed with um the rate of change in crypto and it would be just like really useful to get an insight into like if there are ways that you think about things um and how you sort through what is worth um, pursuing so like this idea of token um, uh, token communities versus like an, an idea that you think oh no this um, this maybe is too early right now I, I'm not going to explore this I'm just going to put this on pause or put it on the back burner um, say for example um, more ideas around DAOs and so um, yeah just like wondering I know it's a very like broad question but just like trying to get some insight into how things kind of um, move through your mind. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I I think um, I think over time in crypto, I realized that literally 
you you represent a huge part and i'm when i say you meaning you as alicia and you as the listener that you, you all represent a huge part of the crypto community because we're so small and nascent and whatever you want to envision and build for the crypto community and what you want to see for the ecosystem you can just realize like literally it's just it's that easy and within grasp but at the same time of course it takes work but it's really you you are what you want the community com, the, the the ecosystem to be like um if that makes sense um and, and because you know i i think you know of course we identify and recognize these large trends such as nfts or DeFi, and they're here to stay right but when it comes to actually how crypto will interact with the world and how it shapes the world um however much effort and time you spend educating people around you including the crypto na- native ecosystem to the the, the 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 communities you know peripheral to that whom you know are crypto interested but not you know actually crypto native you can go ahead and educate all those folks and bring them in and and and, and you'll have a, a decent amount of you know traction and 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 adoption that you otherwise wouldn't have seen before and and that's how you you as individuals are able to be feel like empowered to do so if that makes sense um and i i say this because for example you know ave um is a, is a, is a great example of this because originally ave you know was just a small DeFi project uh with sani you know pushing through and 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 and, and, and kind of uh, going around and traveling, teaching folks about um, DeFi and, 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 and what Aave offers. And then over time, those guys really broke the barrier of, you know, going going beyond the crypto native ecosystem and actually educating folks who are very retail driven, uh, mm-hmm. very internationally based. And, you know, those guys resonated with him. And, and that's how Aave really blew up, right? And, and, and that's something I think is really special because as long as you put in effort and time, like people will resonate. You just have to find it because if you think about the market for crypto, it's actually humongous. And what I mean is the potential market for untapped folks who you could bring into crypto because everyone's intrigued about crypto nowadays, at least, right? Because, you know, we have Coinbase IPOA, like, you know, we're finally, we're finally like no longer just part of a scam that, that you know, that everyone talks about. There's some kind of um, a recognition in, in our ecosystem and, 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 and large funds, um, and mainstream folks are all looking at this and they're all intrigued. So you just have to have introduce whatever you want to do to them in a proper way and you'll be able to capture the audience. Um, so that's how I think about building in general, right? It's just, you want to be able to speak in a very uh, relatable way with the, the common common folks uh, who are maybe not you know in crypto, but you want to be able to explain to them what they do. And uh, we're able to do that, you know, through content, through through just you know good content, uh, and and sharing that, you know, um, sharing that piece and what we're trying to do there, kind of gradually graduates them into the you know becoming part of the community and 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 why spend them and, and and be more involved in there. Yeah, it's interesting. Just as education as kind of a, a path into uh, crypto and a path into a community like Global Coin Research. Uh, what do you think in terms of what do you think we could do as an ecosystem? This is a really big question. Apologies. Um, what do you think <laughs> we could do as an ecosystem to um, kind of encourage um, more education and, and a higher quality of education? So does it come down to smaller communities like Glo- Global Coin Research? Um, or um, do, do you think, do you have any ideas on how we can kind of scale the quality of education in crypto? Mm, uh, uh, no, I don't. I don't have a good answer to that. I, I think it's we crypto folks like to hang out with crypto folks, and it's. Yeah. I was talking to someone about this today because you know, like I could talk to you about DAO, and then you know, you talk to the next person, you're and your neighbors, and you talk about DAOs, and you're like, what the hell is that? Um, and you're just like, okay, I don't want to talk to you anymore, you know. And then like you start, just, all your friends are all crypto people, and then you're just like impossible to talk to anyone else. Um, so so I think you know, folks have to make an effort to, to, to focus on education. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's definitely, it's definitely 
definitely becoming a, a, a more of a focus in the crypto community because, you know, um, I think, you know, I still want to highlight some good folks who have been writing and educating folks on, on, on crypto stuff, uh, you know, with one one guys, you know, such as Linda Shea writes really good stuff, mm-hmm. um, Amir or, or uh, Hasib from Dragonfly writes a lot oh, of yeah. great detail posts, right? He, he mm-hmm. just, and these guys really spend the time to educate folks. That's, that's like real education. Um, and, and, you know, we try to, you know, promote our writers and researchers who do that as well by, by sharing their pieces on global coin research. And, you know, if you Google something like, what is this, you know, you'll be able to see our pieces, but you know, when it comes to wider education, I think I see, you know, a lot of, for example, banks are doing that now by having their own research desk focusing on, you know, crypto. And of course it's mostly alpha driven, right? You're looking for, 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 for some, some insights and edge when it comes to this type of education, but, um, that's still a, a solid way of, of, of drawing new folks into the space. Right. And, and I think technology, uh, on the technical side is a little harder because usually, oh, I, I haven't seen any, maybe, maybe you, you probably have, I, and I'm not technical, which, which is, could be possibly why I don't see that much. Um, but, but, um, when it comes to educating folks in using a certain types of frameworks or like writing code in solidity, for example, right. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't seen that much great education, but I think I'm sure the theory foundation is doing a lot of good stuff there, for example. And, you know, of course we're going towards multi-chain right? and all chains needs to like offer that piece of education to be able to, um, to be able to attract the projects and, 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 and um, talent onto the platform. So yeah. I think I'm rambling a little bit, but. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's cool. I actually think um, that that was really useful. Just this idea that with, if you're a developer and you come into the space, you know exactly what you're looking for in terms of content. You're like, cool. I want a, a tutorial on how to build a, an Ethereum dApp. Um, and I want it to be. Uh, an NFT marketplace or I want it to be an AMM, um, whatever it is. And it's it's very specific and so it makes it much easier to find the content if, if it is out there. Um, and it's really interesting though because when you come into the space and if you're not technical, so you're not looking for specific content, um, you're kind of just like, I'm here to learn. I don't know exactly what I'm looking for and I, I don't know who to look to, but I think, like you said, Haseeb and Linda in particular, I'm so grateful um, every time they write something, every time they're on a podcast, it is such an education. And um, I think that is like, that's a little bit of alpha there. I, I think just like a, a Twitter list of VCs who create content um, would probably be a really great starting point for people um, who, especially a, a non-technical and you, you're just trying to get that macro view of the space. Um, so yeah, that, that's really, that's really helpful for me as a way to think about things. Um, and so I wondered just if we could, um, skip back to, you mentioned Coinbuys and, um, I, I spoke to Jenna recently. I'm so excited about what Coinbuys is doing. And, um, I, I wondered just how, if you could talk us through your experience with Coinbuys and, and how that works with GCR. Yeah, for sure. We're longtime partners of, of Coinbase. And honestly, I think, and for, for the full disclosure, I'm also an investor in, mm-hmm. uh, personally, uh, just because I saw so much grit and hustle coming from Janiel and his team. And, you know, I still remember that uh, uh, the one time, Jan- so Janiel's based in India and, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, of course there was a, a COVID breakout in India. And I remember Janiel was like, okay, I, I think, my family and I are both all sick from COVID, and 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 I was like, okay, go go rest and make sure that you guys, you know, are 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 are, able, are, are okay, and and you know, go to the hospital and, and check yourself, and you know, like within twenty four hours, he's like, we're back, I'm back, you know, like <laughs> I'm just like, I'm so worried for you. <laughs> yeah, so That's, that seems like a superhuman thing that he would do. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. He's like, I'm totally okay. Let's move on. <laughs> We're, not, we're good here. Um, so, you know, that's just one example of how, how, how much respect I have for him personally as a founder, because he's so passionate about, you know, and especially when we're in the very first innings of tokenized communities and tokenized platforms. And for someone like him to be able to drive and have a vision for where we're going is super important, right? Going back to what I said before, right? it's really about how much hustle and grit you have and contribute and dedicate to this particular, you know, 
any any segment of the crypto space and you push that forward and people just follow you because no one knows where we're going right and, and i think that's that's what that's that's what we're seeing in, in coinvice now and and you know what we have done with coinvice for example we're as gcr um as, as a platform we have been always partners because um they have been one of the great and clear voices in the tokenized communities area the social token arena and same time they have continuously been building and just like nonstop mm-hmm. offering features for 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 other folks in the space, right? And that's one of the, one of the most important parts, right? It's you're actually building for people in the space who have a need, right? So, um, um, for example, he's building a some tool tools for some one of the largest media platforms. I'm not going to share who, but I'm sure they'll be able to announce it soon. Um, and and just being able to see that and 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 hear it from firsthand from the team is very inspiring for us of and, and and informs us of where we should go and how we should be thinking about you know how we con- construct and, and uh, our our communities and, and our our tools uh to to make a better offering for 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 everyone yeah and so um i'm really excited about the aspect of discoverability with coinvise and so I I guess just like seeing that grow as a home for contributors and especially writers in the space to find um, kind of available bounties. And so, yeah, I I wonder if in terms of how you see Coinvise growing in that relationship to writers, um, what do you kind of hope for um, in that space? That's a really good question. I think for Coinvise, for example, I know they have started building tokenized, um, content so uh, or token gated content which you know allowing individuals to hold a token or pay tokens to be able to access content right and i think that's just like the very number one thing you want to have because you know for example this is how substack has really blown up right just by providing that simple gated wall for anyone to be able to um, um build and write a, uh, and write and have a platform and voice and, and be able to monetize that um and i think it would be especially um well received in crypto because you know, everyone wants our participants in, in networks and, you know, for any writer to promote themselves and, and ask for tokens in return uh, or payment in tokens, uh, payments in terms of tokens in return, I think it's very natural. Um, so they're doing a lot of great stuff there. And then they're also building a lot of tools for communities where we use a lot of these tools to, for example, reward community members when they're contributing um, and, and putting out bounties uh, and for, for members to, 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 capture and, and, and contribute so so yeah just just great all around yeah amazing and re- i'm so excited um and, and like you said I, I think that journal is just such a beacon of um you know hope and potential of what e- everything that is good in the space um so I, i'm and you know almost grateful that he's like chosen this as his um as his mission and and i'm sure you're you're really excited about that fact as well that um, focusing on kind of creators and and how um, to better um, create opportunities and for creators and, and communities. So yeah, that's really awesome. Um, and yeah, and there like, is enough tools for the crypto right. space for especially social token and tokenized communities. Sorry, I had to say that. Yeah, anyway. No, yeah, <laughs> that's, something, that's something I actually thought when um, Gina was talking about what Coinbase was doing. I was just thinking, oh my goodness, like to, to release all of these tools, like that means that you are thinking about all of these things to the point where you feel comfortable releasing a tool for it into the the wild and so I imagine that like a, a lot of um, communities or projects just focus on on one aspect of it and um, Coinbase is kind of taking on the whole suite of things and also like um, yeah like shifting the horizon as they go so um, such such a big task but so optimistic um, about all of that so yeah that's really cool yeah yeah I agree I agree it, it's this it, the space is moving so quickly and evolving and it's like everyone kind of has their own versions of a DAO or have their own version mm-hmm. of, social, of a tokenized community and, and trying to capture and make sure that you're, 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 wow. you're, you're prioritizing the right types of products to build. I think mm-hmm. Genio has been really kind of um, getting to that, you know, just finding good partners to, to integrate with and, and, and working with the right types of folks because yeah, it's just pretty hard and full suite is just 
crazy how much (laughs) fat they ship. Yeah. (laughs) And so in terms of really kind of exciting uh, projects and and people that are coming through Global Coin Research and and maybe a few of those trends that you're noticing um, just in the last couple of months, um, is there anything that stands out to you that is kind of particularly interesting or exciting? Trend, uh, trends in terms of individuals and, or just members in the community. Yeah, or um, what what the content is about. So I, I don't know if there's like a, a lot of talk about um, building communities or NFTs or DeFi. Just I'm sure you get like a whole spread of things. And so anything that is like particularly resonated with you. Yeah, I think we have had a decent amount of NFT contributions um, breaking down the most recent kind of NFT that 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 um and of course the meme coins is has always oh, yeah. been a, 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 a fun focal point of discussion but but um there is a notable writer on global coin research called clear chain capital they're a small uh crypto fund based out of india and these guys are you know traditionally um kind of from coming from the finance background but are putting a great fundamental type of perspective around analyzing crypto tokens. And they write these huge long posts of dissecting the token. And then they create these like extensive Excel models, um, which I'm very impressed about. Yeah. And then, you know, you can see them on global coin research and it's just super impressive how much do they, how much thinking they put into these, Mm -hmm. these, these projects, right. You know, honestly, I don't think even the projects themselves don't often do that themselves just because, I mean, there's many things that they need to do and, you know, it's not like just because you listed on an exchange, you're a public company and you had to report your financials quarterly. No one thinks that way in crypto, right? But no. of course, <laughs> in, tradi- in traditional companies, you have to do that. And these guys are really implementing and applying these models into these projects. And I think it's really great because it really illuminates a lot of the kind of, of the underlying value that these projects have that, you know, traditional investors, for example, resonate with a lot. But, you know, of course, um, many of crypto investors are, are more like, you know, trend followers or trend trend tracking. I won't say trend followers, they're trend trackers. Um, and, 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 you know, it's just, I just, I just think it's great to have these more of these perspectives coming from different, different places, especially folks who are not, you know, originally from crypto. Um, I mean, no one's originally, from crypto, but like they're <laughs> relatively new to crypto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that's awesome. Um, and I was just, thinking when you were saying that about meme coins and I guess like in in one respect I think about research and you know what you're talking about like uh, uh, um, writing with uh, excel models and things like that on one side of the spectrum and I guess like meme coins and narratives on another side and another end of the spectrum and so I wonder have just like your thoughts on the importance of narratives um, when it comes to investing versus you know, traditional fundamentals um, from kind of fi- and financial metric standpoint? Yeah, I think memes are, I, I it's, memes are very viral and, and, and that's mm-hmm. what, you know, really resonates with, you know, most of the crypto audience who are, you know, retail driven and, and, and trend tracking. So, so um, I, I honestly am not, I feel like I'm not cool enough to be like following this all day. <laughs> like I'm just like looking at fundamentals. I'm like evaluating companies and their founders. I'm like, okay, I think this founder's great. Like Janiel, right? Like this founder's great. Yeah. I, I'm in, right? But like when it comes to memes, I think of course it drives the craziest of volatile actions in the market. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of them are long lasting, right? I, I think, you know, for the mm-hmm. NFTs, some of them are really long lasting. And, um, but but uh, I think they're a, uh, vital and uh, uh, unnecessary evil in, in, in this space this is mm-hmm. how i yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and entertaining I, always entertaining yeah yeah definitely entertaining yeah. um I, I guess it is just like a completely it, it almost even though there's not many people in crypto kind of globally yet it kind of um again gives you some sort of insight or signal into um, just like the separate worlds or ecosystems that exist, that retail is like a very different experience, like investor experience to, um, yeah, investors, um, I would say. And so, yeah, that that's um, 
that that's really interesting to think about and i can totally relate to like keeping up with memes and and all that sort of stuff um but yeah yeah, yeah. memes are the ones that draw draw in the the folks who otherwise wouldn't be in crypto just like nfts would right mm-hmm. just um and and i think it, it does it's a, it's a it's a just like you know pump points or if you call them yeah, that yeah, yeah. right it's like it just draws in eyeballs and people yeah. talk about it and and and, and, and it's actually important for any type of like new space you want to have free publicity regardless whether that's good or bad <laughs> yeah totally um so i wonder if like if meme coins and um and and that sort of stuff and memes in general um draw in that kind of retail crowd what do you think is exciting to investors or would be investors um that would draw them into crypto um whether it's kind of like the people or, or projects or um, what do you think is um, making people take that leap? Yeah, I think this is a really interesting question. I, um, from what I hear from folks, it's often uh, the 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 amount of sophistication built into the technology that that's always you know peaking their thoughts when some when someone who's you know quite intelligent and sophisticated and what not in the but. Um, um, uh, but, you know, I, I think it's impossible to n- ignore crypto because, you know, it's like literally a Chinese government is talking about it and, mm-hmm. yeah, um, the SEC is looking at it and, you know, it's like, it's, 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 it's impossible to not be looking at it, but it's more about, you know, um, and, and when it comes to investing, it's, it's, it's very daunting and high risk of and I, I, you know, I think everyone should should be cautious when it comes to investing in crypto, um, because everything sounds so nice and, and great and beautiful, but you know, when like half of these projects don't get used, um, um, and and the other half is like scams. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah, maybe like one percent that's left over. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just to say it's you know it's. Um, uh, it's 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 definitely exciting when you're actually an investor because you're meeting so many hungry young kids. Mm-hmm. You know, Jenny is very young, for example, and I just recently mm-hmm. met a uh, high school graduate who's 18 right now, building this product company called Virtual Exchange. Uh, it's a exchange built on Arweave, um, which is a protocol. Uh, um, um, and, and this guy is just so passionate, you know, and it's so exciting to see that. Um, and its product's really good too. So, so it's, it's, it's a really awesome kind of combination to have. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, you just have to be very, as an investor in crypto, you just have to be like, you know, open to, for example, a direct message on Twitter that gets you in that, 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 that and, you, and how you meet a founder that way. And then you, know, mm-hmm. you never meet a founder otherwise, uh, besides just on Twitter exchanges, um, or, or just, you know, an 18 year old who, who you meet and, and it's just such a norm in this space yeah completely i'm so um excited about the kind of potential of the you know this gen z generation in particular um who have kind of been they've grown up on the internet um in a way you know digit being digitally native for them means something completely different for me um, um in the best way and so i i wonder like how do, how do you feel about how crypto creates opportunities for um that group of people um in a way that maybe that we haven't really valued the contribution of um younger generations at such scale i would say so you know we hear about the the odd um 18 or 20 year old founder making the cover of um you know like a, a top 100 list um but it seems to be like quite a regular occurrence is that kind of your experience yeah i've met a lot of young founders and you know i think there's a lot of danger to i think first of all there are more investors who are willing to take a chance on young founders which is a good thing but at the same time often young founders uh i wouldn't say often Sometimes young founders get distracted, you know, by all these, you know, bling blings um, uh, of, 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 of and the aura of being a founder, and and you know, I think that 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 is a bad distraction for our founders, and um, you know, but, but you, they'll learn from them, right? I, you know, I, I I invest in this project called Matrix. Um, they are providing uh, 
uh, as tooling for for esports teams, uh, crypto tooling for esports teams. And the founder is also eighteen and like already had a failed startup, you know, from you know, sixteen. <laughs> and <laughs> and then you know, it's like I'm like, you know, what do you think you need? You know, from your what did you what did you learn from your past experience? And he's like, you know, I learned to make sure that I have a better relationship with my founders, you know, something like that. Um, I'm like, yeah, that's great. It's, 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 you know, as long as you're learning from these things, it's the most important thing and you're being humble about it. Right. Because that, that's usually the, the problem where it becomes elevated that you're a, some millionaire founder at 18 and like, you know, your ego skyrockets. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I can, well, no, I, I can't I can't imagine what that's like. I, I feel this like moment actually every time I find out the age of a YouTuber who has like a couple million subs and I'm like, no, they're how old? <laughs> like Oh my um, god. <laughs> is, they're all on TikTok now. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um yeah, I, I think I think that's really um a, an interesting kind of development in, in the space, which is um s- something that I, I hope is fruitful um kind of on balance and um yeah because it it is really interesting just like the breadth of i find myself so you know when we talk about um the sec or or governments of nation states i find myself conflicted as to whether to focus like my energy on the reality that is at the moment um especially in the real world or to like channel my energy back into kind of the metaverse and, and focusing on this like younger generation who at some point in time, I mean, I don't know if I'm thinking about timelines that are beyond um, the, the scale of my life, but um, at, at some point in time, like they will be the ones in, in charge and, and they seem to understand it. And I, I feel like a little bit caught in the middle, but how do you balance, I guess, the the realities of the physical world with um, what is happening in crypto? <laughs> That's an interesting question. I, I think it's it's pretty seamless for me pre COVID because there were so many events happening in crypto where you, if when you're just talking to people in, you know, whether online or and you'll see them basically on the after in person. Uh, and there's this is literally like, you know, around the world because everyone just travels so much in crypto um, mm-hmm. or just distribute it. And so it's, you always be able to meet lots of great folks. Um, and I think Communities is a big part. Uh, digital communities mm-hmm. and being part of many of them is pretty important, in my opinion, to be, maybe I'm biased because I'm also like 90%, 95% living virtually more mm-hmm. so than, than physically now. Um, but being part of many crypto communities uh, kind of gives you that explosion. And, and I think it doesn't connect you with the physical world, but it it's 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 it definitely makes you feel like you have a new home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can I can definitely relate to that. I feel like Discord is kind of like the homepage of the metaverse. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's and so I wonder just like in terms of you mentioning communities that um, you kind of are connected to, um, what are some of your favorite communities outside of Global Coin Research to be a part of? Oh yeah, for sure. I have lots of great communities that I love to be part of. Um, so uh, there, I'm part of Freeco, free company. We are a operator based uh, investment team, I guess. It's like pretty distributed team. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a number of operators who's been in the space for a long time, you know, coming from early employees of Coinbase, early employees of Zero, Zero X, um, uh, who all come together to um, kind of share ideas um, and thoughts, and we co-invest together uh, in, in in projects. Um, another community I, I really enjoy being part of is uh, C Club One. Uh, mm-hmm. C Club, uh, I'm sure you've heard of, is a great kind of um, uh, uh, community in itself for you know tokenized uh, or tokenized communities. <laughs> this, is, this is all about community, so. <laughs> so C Club is actually literally a a a, a incubator for tokenized mm-hmm. communities, right? And then they have really been um, fostering a lot of new communities coming out. And uh, we were part of their batch from last year, and we're just just so grateful because they, you know, for example, um, Jess, the founder of C Club, 
introduced me or, or at least highlighted coin vice. And that's how I met Jamil. Um, so, so, and, and you know, just anyone who's part of, uh, honestly, every community is so great in the mm-hmm. sense of, you know, it just really depends on how it resonates with you and what you're looking for. And I'm looking for always just, you know, smart people to talk about, you know, um, social tokens, uh, the, the latest in, 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 in DAOs or, or, you know, or just investments. Right. And I think, um, everyone could form their communities and that, that, that's, that's the best part. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely come to the conclusion that um, your crypto experience, um, particularly in the community sense, is maybe just like a mirror of what, you, like, who you are and what you are hoping to get out of it. Um, so yeah, you can like anyone can join any of these communities that um, that we're in, and they might not have the same experience, or they might have a completely different experience. It's really just like a, a mirror of of who you are and what you put in, um, and but. Like you said, I think like overall people are so hungry in the space and uh, like it's almost like your physical, your physical limits are the only limits that you have. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's, that's really exciting. And, um, and it, it's so incredible to hear uh, about what you've done with Global Coin Research and, um, and just to know that there is a space um, in crypto that, uh, you know, when everyone is uh, following retweeting like the latest meme that there is like a, a group of really smart people who are still kind of like focused on I guess like the, the long-term games of um rather than kind of like the short-term hype um and and yeah and and kind of focused on on thinking and writing which um I hope there is more of in this space and um and I'm excited to keep up with uh, global coin research so thank you so much Joyce I, I really enjoyed this conversation Thank you, Alicia. I really enjoyed this conversation too. A really great meeting you. And, you know, thank you for, for shedding light on global coin research. We are constantly trying to be better and obviously maintaining the quality that we always have had. So, um, yeah, um, lots of exciting things coming out for us. So hope folks can kind of follow us or, or learn more about us on our Discord. Mm-hmm.